I'm not talking your mic. <laughs> Don't talk in there my you mic. Go. Okay. <laughs> all right. New mics. Don't talk in the. All right. Uh, current. Uh, I hereby call this meeting a regular meeting of the Franklin Township Planning Board uh, to order. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 19, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this regular meeting of the Planning Board of the Township of Franklin has been provided. Um, may we? Uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, would the clerk call the roll, please? Councilman Chase? Here. Coral Howe. Present. Alex Carazzi. Present. Cecile asks to be excused. Mr. Mettler. Present. Mustafa Mansour is not here. Bob Thomas is not here. Jennifer Ragnow. Here. Godwin Amolala. Here. Chairman Orsini asks to be excused. Okay. Uh, the first item on the agenda are the minutes of the regular meeting of April 5th, uh, 2017. May I have a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, I move. Is there a second? Second. Um. Councilman Chase? Yes. Oral Health? Yes. Alex Carazzi? Yes. Robert Mettler? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Godwin Amolala? Yes. Uh, the next item would be resolutions, but we have no resolutions before us. Um, so we move on to discussion, and the first item for discussion are the vouchers for Clarkin and Vignulo PC, May retainer of $833.33 and Selleck. Seventy dollars. Uh, may I have a motion to pay the vouchers? So moved. Seconded. Um, yes. Carl Haup. Yes. Alex Carazzi. Yes. Robert Mettler. Yes. Jennifer Ragnow. Yes. Godwin Amola. Yes. Okay, the next item for dis uh, discussion are the Catalpa Park plans. Go ahead. No. Uh, You're on. Hi, everyone. My name is Robert Urso from CME Associates. I'm here with Darren Mazzi. Um, we were retained by, we were retained, good? We were retained by the township uh, actually back in 2013 to prepare concept plans for the Catalpa Park improvements. Um, we subsequently prepared a three-phase plan and presented it to the council in, in uh, 2014. Um, after that presentation, we modified the plan to a smaller plan. We reduced the size, eliminated phase three, presented that plan two years ago in front of the council. Since that time, we made some other minor modifications, and we're here to present those tonight. Okay. So I'll, I'll just get up and I'll show you on the, on the board here. Um, if you're not familiar where, I'm sure you are, where the park is. Um, it's located at the southwest corner of um, Middle Bush, South Middle Bush Road and Old Valite. Um, it's basically 108 acres in size. It's surrounded to the east and basically the uh, northwest by residential properties and to the west and the southern end by Bunker Hill Golf Course. Um, the southern portion of the the park is basically fields along with the northeast portion. Um, the western portion is more wooded. Um, there's also a um, farmhouse on the property which is going to remain. That's in this area here with an existing driveway that comes off Old Valite Road. Um, moving on to the 
improvements. I'll start from the northern end. Um, this is old bleed across the top. Um, the driveway into the facility is basically going to follow the same farm field driveway, um, same entrance. It's going to be a 24 foot wide paved road. It's going to be constructed of porous pavement. As you drive into the site on the right side will be a parking area. The parking area will generally be for the cricket fields um, and be about enough space for 67 parking spaces. To the left of the driveway in are two cricket fields, which is in the open existing open field. Um, there's a larger cricket field to the north and a smaller cricket field to the south. We located these fields as far to the northwest as we could to stay away from the residents that are bordering the park. Um, as you continue down across from the parking area, we have a pavilion for the people using the cricket field. There's also going to be a uh, heavily um, landscape buffer to supplement the exi existing buffer. Um, we propo we're proposing, uh, and it was requested I think, by the planning board to have a community garden. Um, we have two locations proposed for the garden, one up by South Middlebush Road, and then we're requested to show another option just to the west of the parking area. Um, as you continue up the roadway, you'll cross a new culvert, which will cross at the same location as the existing culvert. As soon as you get over the culvert, there's an existing driveway to the farmhouse. We're going to construct a new driveway. There'll be a decorative gate with fencing on both sides. And as you continue up to the, at the end of the driveway, you'll come to the main parking area. The main parking area contains about 85 parking spaces. There's a loop at the end for a drop off and pick up. In this area of the park, there's going to be four tennis courts, two basketball courts, uh, a very large tot lot area. There'll be uh, equipment for ages two to five and five to 12, swing sets, and also an ADA compliant um, equipment area. In the middle of that area, there'll be bathrooms with a stamped concrete patio area around the center of the uh, play area. Another feature in this area of the park is a large pavilion. Um, the pavilion could be used for uh, picnics for families, be rented out. So in that area, we're proposing things that you would typically um, see at a barbecue. There'll be picnic tables in the pavilion barbecue uh, equipment behind it, bocce ball, um, beanbag toss, toss, and uh, horseshoes. Um, connecting all the features of the park is a 10 foot wide walkway that goes around all the equipment. It connects to the existing brown trail and also comes up and connects to the exi existing grass um, trail that connects to South Middle Bush. Other miscellaneous improvements, um, there'll be various benches, tables, um, solar power compacting garbage cans. Um, with regard to utilities, we're proposing uh, one or two wells for non-potable water for the restrooms. I'm not sure if I added um, by the cricket fields, we were asked to add a second bathroom or by the cricket area for the cricket people to use. So there'll be two bathrooms we don't know if we're going to need one or two wells. And as far as sanitary sewer, um, we're proposing to use holding tanks. Um, there'll be no site lighting, so that there'll be no lighting at all at the site, the driveways, or the parking area. Um, something else we were asked to do, as part of the project, Old Vliet Road will be improved. Um, it'll be totally reconstructed, 24 foot wide, new pavement, and it'll extend just past the entrance to the park. I think that's the extent of the improvements unless there's any questions just a, a point of just overall uh, procedure uh, the plans as mr. Russo said the plans were there were plans prepared a number of years ago um, the council asked the planning board as well as uh, the open space committee uh, rec advisory council and I believe one or two other committees to review those concept plans uh, those comments were given to the consultant as well as to council it's my understanding that these plans have been prepared, uh, incorporating those comments of the different uh, 
committees, the planning board and council. These are the actual construction plans uh, and council as well has asked that the planning board as well as these other committees review these plans. Um, I, don't rec I don't know if they've been discussed yet by open space and rec advisory, but if they, the, the councilman Chase is shaking his head, so they, say they have been reviewed by those committees. The purpose today is for you to review these plans, see if you have any comments that you'd like to offer the consultant and council. And at some point, I believe in June, some point in the next few months, I should say, uh, there'll be a hearing before the council uh, where the public can come and make comments before council. But this is for this board to comment on the plans and, and again, let the, the consultant and the council know if you have any suggestions. Okay, Mr. Chairman. I, oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I have, of course, seen these plans innumerable times and having sat with most of those committees. <clears throat> One point I want to make is that there is existing shrubbery along the border to the east and the plantings should be inside that, I mean, toward the cricket fields from that. You know, just don't let, <clears throat> so the next version of the plan should take that into account. I don't want to see somebody bulldozing down the existing shrubbery in order to put in the, the, Understood. the, uh, the new shrubbery. Um, Opinions I've gotten meeting with uh, residents, uh, they favor having the community garden by the parking lot for the cricket field. They think that people would be more likely to drive to that and park there. Uh, they probably wouldn't just walk to the one near South Middle Bush Road. Uh, there's been some discussion of <clears throat> having the driveway cross the stream a little further west or the new uh, culvert, which would, uh, the, the main point of this is to diverge from the driveway to the Pachalix farmhouse as early as possible to minimize the number of the public walking up to their door, which they have complained about. But of course, that would take a, a more extensive permit from the DEP than would simply replacing the culvert at the existing point. So I think uh, CME is still exploring this. Um, and yeah, we <clears throat> were saving something like $250,000 by not running a main way to the south to connect up to the sewer line that uh, comes out of Knob Hill, uh, instead having the bathrooms just connect to tanks that will pump out occasionally. The bathrooms, according to the manager, will normally be locked unless, you know, for the main area, if there's a group that has rented that facility, then they will get the key to that bathroom. Presumably the cricketers will get the key to the bathroom by the, the cricket uh, parking lot. The, <clears throat> as you see, there's a pavilion for people to watch cricket and a few benches uh, at the edge of the cricket field that's much reduced from an earlier version of the plan, you know, and uh, my experience of going and watching the cricketers play at, on Western Road, there are not very many people watching them, and of course they can watch from up at the pavilion, which will give them some shade. I think those are the main you know, sort of fill-in comments I would have, but I'm eager to hear, uh, and uh, as I say, I've met with residents a number of times and I think a, a lot of the features here are to meet the requests of residents ar around it. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Chase. Uh, Mr. Karzai. Karazi, okay. Uh, I had a question on the cricket parking lot. If I understood correctly, uh, there are going to be some uh, championship games here 
And I'm wondering how, well, what parameters you use to come up with that 67 car parking lot and whether or not when we have some major games going on, which may draw quite a few cars and people, we will have uh, a place for overflow parking. Well, I, we base that on um, existing cricket fields. And actually, there was a traffic study done, and they studied the cricket field at, I think, Weston. And the maximum amount of cars was about 37. So we figured if there's family and other people coming to the garden or just using the walking paths, we were able to um, fit 67 parking spaces. But there's also room up on the uh, western side for 85 parking spaces, and it's connected by a walking path. So you looked at basically a couple of uh, existing cricket fields that they use during the championship games to, to see how many uh, uh, P how many cars usually are coming uh, during those games, or yeah. you just picked one and looked well, at? Well, uh, we've designed a couple of cricket fields, uh, Phillips Preserve in Old okay. Bridge. Um, okay. I think there was another one that our landscape architects designed, okay. and they have studied it, and that's what they thought was appropriate. I might mention that once I went with Councilman Prasad to a championship game in South Brunswick, and there weren't all that many um, spectators. I mean, maybe 20, 25. So it's the players play for the love of the game. Uh, my whole observation is that uh, based on what you are giving us in terms of the total number of lots, if we sum it with the 87, that should be appropriate enough to accommodate uh, would be uh, spectators and also the players. I think uh, we are in shape with that. I'm be in shape with that. Between the two lots? Yes. Yes, I think so it would. Nobody plays the game. Um, are there any other questions? Okay, so what. Um, but again, what I think what the council's looking for is some uh, input. Um, Councilman Chase had, in, had, had made a number of comments. What I heard was, was two comments that were in the form of uh, suggested changes for them to consider. Uh, and Ted, you can correct me if, I'm, if I didn't hear you correctly, but uh, do you want, would you want to suggest that the community garden be by the cricket field and that be a recommendation of the planning board? Is that what you would suggest? Yeah, well, Third location would be parking lot. It's also been suggested if, if it's also been suggested if you look at this representation that there is a strip of unwooded area down closer to the the culvert, and possibly it could be there. But I think we're more likely to put it right by the parking lot there. And I would note, for those who don't know the site, that the, all of the, the facilities here are in an area of second growth red cedar. And we've stayed out of the uh, mature deciduous forest, which there is to the south, uh, really a little further than you can see on the map. And also to the to the north, uh, there's mature deciduous forest, but we've tried to keep the everything in an area of second growth red cedar, which is there's a lot of in the township and is no great loss. And the second, um, so the first one uh, again was the community garden preferred location would be by the cricket field parking lot. And the second recommendation that I heard was to move the landscape screening to the west or to the east, so as not to be over the shrubbery that is uh, growing. Yeah, up. exactly. Uh, it's particularly up at the upper end there. There's a quite a substantial uh, shrubbery there already. Oh, and one thing. Um, that's been discussed is having a fence inside the, the landscaping there uh, to deter people walking through from 
the resonances over to the east. Uh, the last discussion I had with representatives of that uh, particular uh, unit of the Hovnanian development, they suggested about a three-foot fence because they want to still make it possible for the deer to come across uh, but deter people from going through. So would you like, would you suggest that that be a recommendation of the planning board then? Yes. Okay, yeah. so investigate three foot high fence um, between the park and the adjoining residential development? Yeah, well these are all suggestions that I've made in numerous meetings on this plan. So if those are um, suggestions that are being offered, if somebody wants to make a motion, and I think the motion would be in the form of um, requesting that staff convey these recommendations to council. Uh, I, I do have one other question that's come up, uh, and that is, uh, speaking of deer and the community garden, is it proposed to have a fence around the oh, community? Definitely. Yeah, okay, very good. All our community gardens. That's it. Yeah, otherwise the deer otherwise would, would be, be very happy. But oh, the, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's not just deer. I don't know whether this would be a, a problem here, but at the other gardens of, shall we say, unauthorized harvesters. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that can, can happen as well. I would just add that I would concur with uh, Dr. Chase about the location of the garden because it, uh, people who would be using it would be also bringing tools and equipment uh, because there wouldn't really be a Good place point. to store them. So uh, you wouldn't want to be lugging uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, hose, shovels, uh, baskets full of things to plant uh, down the walkway. It just so I, I, I would strongly uh, concur that uh, that would be the preferred location for the uh, community garden. And uh, uh, we oh, oh, another suggestion that's been made, and this again came uh, really from talking to residents. In an earlier version of the plan, there was going to be a trail around outside the cricket field, just inside the... Uh, the, the landscape buffer, and the residents generally did not want that, but it was also proposed to have uh, various sorts of fitness equipment along that trail, and they suggested instead having it along the trail that's over at the west end there. Yeah. Uh, so that would also be part of the recommendation. Okay. okay. What would that What would that be again? I'm sorry. I was. I was. Uh, uh, to along the trail that's mostly to the. I guess it's west or. It would be west. The, west. Yeah. It would be the trail around the large yeah. pavilion. Yeah. Okay. Trail the, uh, the large that there be some fitness equipment placed at and strategic spots. Yeah, and people also said, you know, keep the existing trees along that trail don't take everything out because the trail obviously it would have to be taken out where there are the active recreation facilities but the trail goes further into the woods than that it's somewhat simpler trail than was proposed in earlier versions and again I think that's what people felt was better are there any other recommendations besides those which have been enumerated? Uh, in that case, I would accept a motion to forward the, the recommendations of the planning board to the town council for their consideration. Is there a second? Well, I would make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Thank you. The motion you. carries, and we move on. Um, there is a, the next item for discussion is a request for an extension of time from 413 Somerset Street Associates, LLC. Do we have a representative? Yes. 
you may. If it, uh, I, 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 uh, yes, I, I would use the, the microphone that we know works. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Good evening, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members, board professionals. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Chang from the law firm of Halbram Pape. I'm here this evening on behalf of 413 Somerset Street Associates. Uh, last year, about this time, we received an extension uh, for the preliminary and final site plan approval, which I believe was granted in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, since that time, we've secured the sewer approval, but have to post the final um, monies uh, to secure it, and then there's also been a, I believe, a pipe company that's been renting the property uh, that has been doing some work for the municipality. Uh, they recently signed, I think, another additional 90-day um, lease, so we're in the process of move, removing them from the property. Uh, I believe that the work they're doing for the municipality has, it will be completed shortly. Um, and for those reasons, uh, we're here, oh, in addition to additional work from our engineer doing resolution compliance with your township engineer. That's why we're here for an extension this evening. Uh, what is the length of the extension that uh, you would like? One year. One year, okay. Uh, does the st would the staff care to comment on, on the request? No, I think the, the reasons you stated seem valid and the time frame of one year is the, kind of the standard um, extension time that's granted. In that case, is there a, a motion to grant the extension? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to grant the extension, please. Seconded. Uh, moved and seconded. Yes. Councilman Chase. Oral Houck. Yes. Alex Carazzi. Yes. Robert Mettler. Yes. Jennifer Rango. Uh, Godwin Amola? Yes. Thank you very much and have a good evening. I, I do apologize. Uh, after many years of having to lean forward for the old, uh, uh, it, it's, it's awkward not to do it. So there we go. Um, the next uh, item we have are public comments. These would be comments from the public on any item that is not on the agenda for its own hearing. And uh, so I would accept a motion to open the meeting to the public. Second. Well, so moved. <laughs> Second. And seconded. Second. Yeah. Uh, moved by Dr. Chase, seconded by Mr. Carrasi. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the meeting is now open to the public on any anything you would like to talk about whatsoever. Mr. Chairman, I don't see anybody coming forward. I make a motion to close. Uh, Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, the meeting is. Uh, the public hearing is closed. We are back in session, and the next item are hearings. Uh, there are two on the agenda. The first one, Somerset Atrium, is carried to the June 7, 2017 meeting uh, without further notice being required. So we have one other hearing scheduled, which is RPM Development, LLC, PLN 17009. Is that really full of papers for this application or do you do that just to impress us? No, it, it, it is actually part of my file for this application. I actually have more papers back in the office, but given my age, I can't carry them all. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Lanford appearing on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an application uh, to construct 
six buildings consisting of 151 residential units uh, in the redevelopment area within the church, Churchill Millstone Residential Zoning District. Uh, the application that we're presenting to you today is a conforming application in all respects except for a variance for the signs that we are proposing identifying the project. It meets all of the setback requirements, density requirements, and as a matter of fact, as a result of discussions that we had with the redevelopment agency, uh, this project is well under the allowable height of the buildings, well under the density requirements of the zone. Uh, and actually what you're seeing tonight is a plan that has been, uh, been reviewed by the redevelopment agency, has been reviewed by staff on numerous occasions. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, there was a meeting yesterday with the township engineer, the township planner, uh, our professionals, and there were some other minor changes that were are being proposed uh, in conjunction with the plan. Uh, this evening, as you can see, I have a lot of people sitting back to my left. I think uh, I can present this with the testimony of basically the architect and the engineer and probably will not need to call all of the professionals that I have here this evening. Uh, but they're all here and available to testify if uh, needed. I also think probably the easiest way to present this application this evening would be to allow me to present both witnesses to go through the entire project and then we would be happy to answer questions of the board or the public, whether it be as to the buildings or to the site plan. <clears throat> With that opening, I'd like to call as my first witness, Mr. Kogan. Up and running, I just want to know step down from the dock. Thank you, Mr. Vignola. That's correct. Okay. Testimony you're going to provide us the truth, whole truth, and nothing but. I do. Robert Kogan, C O G A N. Mr. Kogan, you can have a seat. Sure. <clears throat> Mr. Kogan, by whom are you employed? Uh, I'm a principal in the firm of Barton Partners, Architects and Planners. Can you give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Yes, I have uh, a Bachelor of Architecture degree from Virginia Tech. I have been practicing architecture for uh, 35 years now. And, and you're like, a licensed? I'm a licensed in New Jersey, thank you. Yeah. Okay. I would offer his testimony as a, uh, as a licensed architect, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're happy to accept your Great, testimony. Mr. Kogan, uh, you will be relying on certain exhibits this evening in presenting the testimony to the board. Correct. Okay, as we're going through your testimony, we'll have to mark the exhibit. Yeah. So uh, I guess we can do them one at a time as you sure. uh, touch on those exhibits. Do you also have a handout? Uh, I do have some handouts. I didn't grab them right now, but I can do them. Why don't you grab the Great. handout so we can give them to the board members? Yeah. And for the record, what we will be handing out will be exhibits uh, which will match the, uh, the exhibits that uh, we will be marking at the evidence. Is that correct? Correct. I'll do Mr. Vignola's mark one set is A1, and it consists of Representative of the marked exhibits we're going to have during the yes. testimony, so you can pass them out. Okay. Well, I, I probably won't go through every single one of those sheets, but that's, that's the submission. And we decide that we haven't gotten to every. There you go.
Mr. Cogan, before we go into sure. what we are going to be doing on the subject property, can you describe what the subject property looks like today that we are going to be redeveloping? Yes. <laughs> And let's mark that exhibit A1. Uh, <coughs> this board is uh, four photographs of the uh, existing site conditions uh, uh, taken from various uh, places throughout. Um, I think most notably you might be able to see um, in the bottom uh, left corner and then the uh, uh, upper right, you can start to see some of the, uh, the buildings on Barry Avenue in the distance so you kind of get a little bit of a perspective and bearing of where you are. But it's obviously um, not that nice. Okay. And it basically was a company, part of the project property was by a company that was in the construction business and, and stored materials on the site. And pretty much left a lot of it there. Okay. Now, what were you charged with when you were retained by the applicant? Uh, we actually, our firm started the uh, initial site plan, conceptual site plan, and then the architecture as well. Um, and I want to talk about the site plan a little bit and a little bit about the character of the place. And then dynamic engineers took it from there and, and did all the engineering. Okay. Why don't you proceed? Sure. And hopefully everybody can see it. I'll start over here on the, this site plan. <coughs> and that's the dynamic that's site dynamics. plan. And, and dynamic will testify later as to Correct. how they prepare the plan. But we can mark that as A2. Okay. And uh, generally speaking, if everybody can see, uh, north is generally up on the, on the drawing. And you can see the rendered buildings uh, here, which are one, two, three, four, five buildings. Um, there are different types of buildings. I'll describe those a little bit. Uh, but probably just, uh, and, and there's a, a very large green area, a park, if you will, a parklet, if you will, in the center. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, in my conversation with RPM, uh, understanding <coughs> how this project, how they envisioned it, and what they charged us with doing, how it came about, and really was through years of uh, dialogue with the redevelopment agency about trying to do a, a couple of things. Uh, try to create a place, uh, not just buildings and spaces between buildings. So what we try to do is really focus our design around this park area in the center, which uh, the Jonathan Dynamic will describe in more detail, but that was a place, as a gathering place, it's centrally located in the, the whole redevelopment zone. So it's not just for the residents of our proposed buildings, it's for everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, one of the other things they wanted to do too was uh, actually was to, to bring down the scale and the density. So they could have developed a lot more, as you mentioned earlier. So, so we only went with three story buildings, not four. And part of that also was one of the, we wanted to, to provide a little bit of a different uh, uh, mix of uh, what the buildings look like in, in terms of scale as well. Uh, and then the third thing, there was an encouragement to uh, introduce more market rate units into the project. So as, it's, as it stands, it is 45% uh, market rate, 55% affordable, intermixed. So I would say that relative to the architecture, and I'll get rid of this. This I'll mark A3, this is a perspective rendering. And this is essentially more of a, a character sketch, if you will, and it, it's taken from a, a vantage point around the uh, central green area. Um, and it shows uh, some of the things that are uh, in, uh, in part of the proposed for the plan, benches, shade trees, street furniture. You can see the scale of the buildings behind, and the buildings themselves are uh, really, they're, they're doing some unique things. Buildings uh, A, and C uh, face what's we'll call Road A, and that's where their main entrance is for anybody walking on the sidewalk to get into your unit if you live on the first, second, or third floor. There are parking fields behind, and every one of these buildings have been brought closer to the street to make the sidewalk experience a little bit better. But we also did, uh, and buildings A and B and C around the park especially is we introduce a different kind of a unit. Instead of an apartment flat, we have two-story townhome type units that are wedged into the building. So they all have their own front doors. Yes, they have their own back doors that are from a corridor from the building, but they have front doors, front stoops to encourage street activity, walkability, and people eyes on the street and things like that. It's, it's, these are 
uh, elements that we as architects and designers do to help make a place a place. There's another perspective rendering, which I'll label A4. And uh, we're seeing a little bit more again in the foreground of this uh, park area, uh, hardscape and, and softscape and, and, and such. There's a rather large uh, green lawn field, which I will talk about a little bit more detail. Um, per meeting with uh, professionals yesterday, we have redesigned that area to increase its uh, green lawn area, but I think I believe by 18 to 20 percent. We reduced a, a whole rain garden area to, to make it so that there's a lot of opportunity for more active uh, recreation. Uh, <coughs> relative to the architecture, you're starting to see a little bit of it here. Um, we, we followed certain elements of the redevelopment plan in terms of the, uh, the materials used. We have three major materials. Uh, we have panels that are of a fiber cement material. We have uh, fiber cement lap siding, and then we have some stone as well. Um, we, we oriented them a little bit more vertically. They're a little bit more, they're a little bit modern. They're not as modern as, say, Voorhees Station um, buildings, but they're not as traditional as those on Barry. So our intent through this, helping to stitch this whole redevelopment together, was to sort of bridge the gap a little bit, if you will, in terms of, uh, in terms of the architecture. It's modern, but not overtly so, in, in our opinion. This next sheet, which is going to be A5, is the building A elevations. And now you start to see a little bit more detail as opposed to the trees in the foreground and the perspective rendering sort of hiding the building. Now this is more of an architectural drawing. You can see the various colors, grays and browns and whites, which again were in the redevelopment plan as far as the palette that we wanted to use. And you can start to see areas of the stone, areas of the uh, panel, and the areas of the uh, uh, lap siding. The windows are um, a little bit more modern, uh, traditional. We have elements over top of the windows with a little, what we call an eyebrow, a little metal element to give a, a shadow line and to get water dripping away from the building. And as an example, you can start to see in this one location here is an entrance way where we took that same eyebrow uh, motif, if you will, to highlight where that entrance is. We have uh, entrance uh, address numerals on it as well. The below drawing, which is the east elevation, now you can see what I was mentioning before. Here are the individual entrances to the two-story towns. So they each have their own front door and a stoop and such. And that was one of the reasons why we decided to orient them a little bit more vertically. I can show you the other elevations, but I, this elevation here really kind of captures the flavor, I think, of, uh, of, of all the buildings. Okay, can you just briefly indicate the, the mix of the units between one, two, and three bedrooms? Yes. In, in rough terms, the one bedrooms represent 32% of all the units. The two bedrooms are 53%, and the three bedrooms are just shy of 15%. Okay, and the floor plans for those units were part of the submission that we made with respect to this yes. application and is in the board member's packet, is That's that correct? correct? Now, you've had an opportunity to review uh, the staff reports that were uh, generated in conjunction with this application and with respect to the uh, architectural comments, Mr. Healy in his report made reference to uh, some of the design standards uh, that are required and you were familiar with those design standards and as you testified you incorporated those design standards That's correct. in the plan. Yes. Okay, and also these buildings have been also reviewed by the redevelopment agency and they have been supportive of the look of the buildings. Thank you, I have no further questions. If, if I may, I'd like to move on to Mr. Palis as my next witness. That's fine. Then Mr. Palis will start with A7 after he's sworn. Yes, thank you. Uh, 
I do. Okay, your name, spell your last name, and give your address. John Palis, P's and Peter, A L U S, 1904 Main Street, Lake Como, C O M O, New Jersey. Mr. Palis, what is your occupation? Uh, principal of Dynamic Engineering. And again, briefly, can you give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Uh, cer certainly. I have a bachelor's and a master's in civil engineering from Rutgers University. I'm a licensed professional engineer in uh, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, as well as Texas, a licensed professional planner in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I've testified before over 100, I think I'm over 150 various planning boards, zoning boards throughout the state, uh, including uh, both boards here in Frankie. I would offer the testimony of Mr. Palis both as a uh, licensed engineer and if planning testimony is required as a planner also. Uh, we're happy to accept. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Palis, your office prepared the site plan which we've handed out a colored copy of which has been marked as A2. A2, is that correct? That is correct. All right. Can you briefly take the board through, well, yeah, let's go back and sort of orient the board as to where the project is, and then we'll go through the site itself. So I also have a colored uh, aerial that was, in, it's a colored version of what was submitted as part of our site plan. That would be A7. And Peter's going to hand out a copy of that. So I'm going to start with A7, which is the board to the left. For the purposes of my testimony for both exhibits, I'm going to use uh, Route 27 as a north-south uh, fashion. So uh, the top of the page will be north for both exhibits A2 and A7. Uh, subject property is located within the uh, Churchill Millstone Residential Zone in the Churchill Millstone Redevelopment Area. Uh, existing conditions of block is the overall property is block 112, lots 1 through 8. 9.01, 16.01, 25.01, and 42 through 49, as well as block 117, lots 20 through 47. The property is bounded to the south by School Avenue, to the west by Berry Street, and then to the north by Voorhees Avenue, referring to Exhibit A7. It would be deline delineated by the, uh, the white line that runs along Voorhees Berry Street, School Avenue, and then has a jog at the northeast corner. Overall, the property uh, to the north beyond uh, Voorhees, we have residential uses. To the east, we have commercial uses with uh, Route 27, a little bit further to the east. Uh, to the south, beyond School Avenue, we have commercial uses. And then to the west, we have a beautiful residential use just beyond uh, Berry Street. Overall, the lot area is 5.165 acres. Uh, the, the uses today are a mix of residential and commercial uses. Clearly, the site uh, portions of the site definitely are in a state of disrepair. Uh, overall, existing building footprint on site is about uh, 12,825 square feet. Pervious coverage is uh, just over 40 percent. There are two small isolated uh, wetland areas on the property. One's on the west side, one's uh, further up to the north. We currently have uh, approvals to the DEP to, uh, to handle those wetland areas. Um, access to the site, there's a number of driveways associated with the individual uses that are located there today. Uh, very little landscaping on site. Most of the open spaces are somewhat overgrown. Um, very simply, referring to exhibit A2 now, which is the board to your right. Again, I'll be using north as the top of the exhibit. We're proposing a total of 151 uh, units of residential apartments. It's permitted. That is roughly, uh, my, by my calculation, 58% of the permitted density per the redevelopment plan. So we're well below what uh, the redevelopment plan would allow for this uh, type of use. Overall, the lots will be consolidated into one lot. Uh, as part of my testimony, I'm going to, uh, we've already met with, we had the benefit of meeting with your professionals, the engineer and the planner. Um, as a caveat, we're going to meet all of their recommendations with the exception of a couple items which I will address directly in my testimony so we can go smoothly through it. I'll note those um, as we go through those modifications that we are willing to make. Um, building A, which would be the southwest building, um, has 40, 43 units. Uh, building B is the uh, southeast unit, which is also 43 units. Building C, uh, which would be to the northwest, 
Likewise is uh, the 53 units. And then we have buildings D and E, which would be at the northeast corner. Those are a little bit smaller. Uh, those would uh, encompass six units uh, each. The, the total gross floor area is 187,996 square feet. And we're at the 29.24 dwelling units per acre, well below what the uh, redevelopment plan considers. Uh, one of the modifications that we are providing is we do have parking on the interior of buildings A, B, and C, uh, essentially internal to the L of the buildings. Um, on one side of each of those, we have parking up against the building where we had a sidewalk that was just under six foot. Uh, your professionals have asked that we extend that to six foot, which we certainly can uh, to address one of the code requirements. Um, and that doesn't require any modifications uh, external to the, the parking area itself. As far as the overall parking for the site, I'll try to keep this as, as simple as possible. The redevelopment plan has uh, a requirement relative to your, your parking. There's also a residential site improvement standard that you may be familiar with that establishes parking requirements for these types of uses. In a case like this, this board has the ability to, to approve a de minimis modification for the residential site improvement standards. And since this board uh, and governing body has already considered for the redevelopment that we meet, I would assume that this falls within that jurisdiction. Um, we currently propose a total of 218 parking spaces on site, uh, 22 on the street for a total of 240 spaces. Now through the uh, discussions with your professionals, our initial design, there are uh, approximately roughly seven utility poles located along School Avenue. So what we did is we were running parallel spaces and we're cutting in and out out of each of these utility poles. As you can imagine, relocating utility pole, poles can be quite expensive. Uh, there's only three located on Berry Street. The ones on Voorhees weren't impacted, and that's why you have nine in a row, nice parallel spaces. So the discussion that we had was rather than go through expense and, and just to get a couple, uh, I think, seven extra spots on School Avenue, we we're going to curb that off. We're, we're not going to move those utility poles. We won't have parallel parking spaces on School Avenue. We'll lose approximately uh, seven spots from the overall count, still compliant with the redevelopment ordinance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, there's three poles, I think, on Berry Street that we will agree to move. Uh, so those will be pulled back and we'll be able to pick up an extra four spots roughly. On top of that, speaking with your professionals um, and other studies that we've come before, the parallel spots, um, we strike them out at, at a 23-foot length. Uh, which is fairly generous, but it's, it's your ordinance that counts for that. Um, your professionals indicated that it, at other applications they've approved 20 foot. I indicated that in my experience, sometimes when you don't actually delineate those individual spaces, you get more than what's shown. Some people are driving Mini Cooper, some people are driving smaller vehicles. They don't need the 23 or the 20 foot. Um, so if we actually were to eliminate the striping uh, internally and then go to assume a 20-foot space, uh, we were able to get the total parking up to 245 spaces. And that's internal to the site um, on the parallel spaces and then also uh, with the external parking. And that is a ratio of 1.62 uh, spaces per unit. And as a uh, reference, uh, the applicant has done parking counts at several of their other facilities looking at a comparison to make sure that, hey, listen, we meet your ordinance, but the question is, is do we meet the demand of what you would expect from this type of use? And the answer is, is simply yes. Um, they have three different facilities, starting actually with uh, Berry Street. Uh, they looked at it at 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 7 p.m. And the ratio or the demand at those was uh, 0 0.86, 0 0.8, and 0 0.68, well below the 1.6 that we're currently proposing. Uh, they had two other sites which were a little bit higher. Uh, one is Windsor Crescent in Jackson. Uh, the <coughs> highest of that at the 7 a.m. Uh, was 1.46 dropping to 1.05 at noon, and then at 7 p.m., 1.2. Uh, Willow Point, uh, also in Jackson, was also uh, below the Windsor Crescent location. So when you look at their facilities, they're all well below what they're providing here at this location. In addition, we fully comply with the redevelopment ordinance. As, uh, as a result of that, John, we're asking for the board to grant us the de minimis devi deviation from the RSIS requirements. Is that correct? That would be correct. Thank you. What, what's, what's the parking ratio over here uh, at Berry Street? Uh, for what they found at the times they looked at, it was actually um, zero at the 7 a.m., which is usually your highest, was uh, 
0 0.86. They also uh, evaluated the number of uh, permits that were issued. Now, for they, they have 94 units, 188 spots available. They issued 125 permits, which is 1.29. But again, not everybody is parking all at the same time. That's where the, that differential is. Okay, and, and, and I'm sorry, and Vord, he, you went through it very quickly, so I'm just I'm trying sorry. to make sure, because um, these are the ones that are kind of right in that area, so I think they set the best um, you know, precedent for this development. Voorhees Station, what was? What I did was not it? have that one. Okay, and did, did, you, did you have it for Franklin Boulevard Commons? No, I did, the other two were in Jackson. Okay. Um, and I, I, do, I do have, uh, for reference, actually, um, Franklin, we didn't do counts at Franklin Boulevard Commons, but that 66 units has 153 spots, but they issued 88, like, so 88 parking permits were issued to the tenants. And that's a, a ratio of 1.33. Okay. So still well below it. Um, just to follow up on the, on the traffic component, uh, we discussed with your professionals, there was a request in the letter for traffic. We are uh, a permitted use within the redevelopment plan, so it was considered. We did a, a uh, traffic analysis, but we did not do counts. Uh, because we would uh, assume that obviously the redevelopment plan considered that on top of that uh, our, our density is well below what uh, the redevelopment ordinance considered. Um, so in speaking actually with your engineer, he agreed uh, that the counts aren't uh, required for this location. As far as access to the site, um, it, the architect kind of went through like the general field. The main, what I would consider the main entrance is located off School Avenue. Um, so we have two driveways, then we also have uh, two driveways that are strictly for buildings A to the southwest, building B to the southeast. Uh, that's strictly for the internal parking, but as you call, come along, Barry, you now have that uh, fairly large open space area with two drives. Those drives are uh, stamped concrete, creating a, uh, a, a stamped asphalt, uh, creating a nice entrance. And then actually on the north side of that, uh, green space, which is located between buildings A and B, uh, also is stamped uh, asphalt. So you have, as you enter in, if you're coming in off of School Avenue from the south, and you pull in either what we've designated Road D or Road E, uh, it's, it's a nice entranceway, so you have that, that green space, but it's also uh, wrapped around by the, the stamped asphalt as well. Uh, as far as other driveways, we have um, <coughs> two driveways to uh, Voorhees. Uh, you have Road B and Road C. And on Berry, uh, we have Road A, which is a full movement driveway, but then also the internal driveway to the parking for Building C at the northwest corner of the property. Um, as far as radiuses, there were some comments relative to the radiuses at School Avenue uh, and Berry, and then Berry and Voorhees. Uh, we can in, uh, decrease those radiuses as the engineer recommended. That's not a problem. Uh, circulation through the site. Uh, we have five, essentially five internal roads to provide uh, circulation throughout, 24 feet wide. Uh, we have modeled the SU-30 and the Franklin Township uh, fire truck to effectively navigate through the site. We have crosswalks through the interior of the site and we'll also provide them exterior as recommended by the professionals. Uh, refuse and recycling, <coughs> buildings, D and E have a refuse uh, exterior masonry trash enclosure located south of the southern building. Just double check, I, I forget what. Building E's to the north, building D's to the south. Directly to the south of building D is a masonry trash enclosure which would have the refuse, refuse for those two. Uh, as far as buildings A, B, and C, it, they actually use internal uh, trash. So there's a room inside, there's a dumpster. Uh, what will happen is it will be rolled out at the time that trash is picked up and it will roll across the sidewalk. They'll roll it through uh, this, the loading area of the handicapped space and then out to the, uh, the main access aisle where it would be picked up. So it will not conflict with either the handicapped parking spaces themselves, just through the loading area. And that's a short pickup and then it would be wheeled back inside with the, uh, uh, into the, the trash room afterwards. Um, as far as the bulk requirements, we comply with all of the bulk requirements again we're well below the impervious coverage where the ordinance, uh, the redevelopment ordinance allows 100%. We're at 77%. Um, I already hit on the, the density. We eliminate uh, existing condition of a front yard setback. 
Um, the open space area is, uh, as I mentioned, between buildings A and B. Initially, that uh, <coughs> came up with a nice rain garden concept, uh, which I think a lot of municipalities thoroughly appreciate. It's something that a lot of towns have been pushing for. Um, so in the applicant's mind, I think it was a, it was a great idea. But I think what we're looking at here in terms of, even though it's a low density use, I think the township's really looking for more usable space at this location. Now that rain garden wasn't really functioning uh, for groundwater recharge or anything along those lines. That's handled on the basin further to the east, but that can all be cut back. So we have 0 0.45 acres, which will be primarily open space. We're also going to enhance that with some shade areas, some seating uh, off to the side so that there's multiple uses associated with that open area. Um, but the rain garden component uh, will be eliminated and to reduce the rain garden to a smaller area, actually the, it wouldn't function as well. So the basin that's located uh, to the west, the underground basin to the west of uh, that open space park uh, will become just a little bit larger. There's no negative impact outside of that. Um, all the utilities are immediately available without any problems. We do have two large utilities that currently run uh, what would be between building uh, C and D and E from a north to the south direction between School Avenue and Voorhees. Uh, we've worked with the engineer relative to creating an easement to make sure that uh, any maintenance in the future can be handled. Uh, the lighting for the site <clears throat> to residential use, you don't, usually I'm coming in asking for a lot more lighting on a, a, a retail component. Uh, this is, is residential, so we're better off keeping it a little bit lower. We do have a couple areas that are a little bit uh, lower than a half foot candle. We're at uh, 0 0.1 foot candles at a couple areas. Uh, but primarily what we've done is throughout the site we've used, uh, I believe, 33 area lights and they're uh, decorative gooseneck flush lens uh, throughout the site and they're 15 foot height. So rather than raise those up and, and get a better throw, I think we're better off relative to that. And uh, in the parking areas is typically where you see a little bit of a lower light level, but it's also adjacent to residential uses. So we're comfortable with that, um, and we use LED lights throughout the site. There are a couple additional building mounted fixtures located uh, throughout as well. Landscaping, uh, fairly excessive. Uh, <laughs> the uh, total tree count I have uh, for deciduous trees is 90, ornamental trees was three, evergreen trees seven, Shrubs uh, we have at 510, and then uh, grasses, ground covers, perennials, we're at 459, and rain garden two, which is the one that's further to at the southeast corner of the property, had a to uh, about 3,400 different uh, plantings located throughout. The uh, rain garden that was associated with the park obviously will be modified uh, to adjust for the elimination of the rain garden component, uh, but it will still be uh, substantially landscaped. Uh, to enhance that feature. All landscape areas will be irrigated. Um, stormwater management, we have uh, three basins. There's, uh, there's a basin located at the northwest corner underground arch system uh, with a uh, manufactured treatment device. We have a basin that's located underground adjacent to the park on the west side. And then we also have a basin and an uh, open basin at the southeast corner of the site adjacent to building B. We have the underground and then um, on the, the east side as well, that handles the, uh, the infiltration. Uh, without going too far into specifics, our overall reductions, uh, two year, uh, we go from 5.86 CFS down to 2.78. The 100 year goes from 20.6 down to 15.33. Um, signs, there are proposing three signs at the major entrances. So we have uh, one along each uh, street. I believe that this is the only variance associated with the application. Uh, I, I consider it unique. Uh, the sign itself, uh, the, the sign itself essentially identifies, the, I believe, the street address. It has uh, the letters, individual letters on, resting on top of the base, and then it has the uh, the street located underneath it. I guess. Ultimately, when they decide the name of the development, um, but the base itself is considered part of the sign. Um, 
So it has the number and then the name of the development and then underneath actually on the uh, split face block, the stone base, it just says, you know, an RPM community. So we're wrapping the whole thing and I think we end up with 20, I don't know, you want to, 20, that, that is in my plans. Yeah. 24 I, square feet where 20 is allowed. So the variance is that the sign including the base is four square feet over. Uh, I would like to mark the sign as a separate exhibit, which would be a eight. So this is that uh, the board has had this type variance before where the actual sign area, the sign that's displaying the message is well below the standard, but our ordinance you include the, the entire structure. They have a decorative base as has been described. Uh, the sign I believe is four feet or five feet in height. Uh, so it's, is that right, four or five feet in height? Uh, he just took my detail. Three, three, oh, so 3.4 feet in height. Um, the base is only two feet, um, but when you include all of that square footage, it's it's actually 24 feet where 20 is the maximum. Um, I think as we'll pass around the exhibit, but as you'll see, it's extremely modest in size and, uh, in my opinion, very attractive in appearance. Okay, uh, just a couple quick items to to conclude his testimony. Uh, one is that there is a utility easement that runs through the property at the present time. Is that not correct? That is correct. Okay, and in the staff report, there was some curbing that was proposed in the vicinity of that utility easement. Uh, can you show the board where that easement is? Uh, I can show you where the utility, I think the easement was more of a, a little bit general, but that, uh, the drain pipe actually aligns with the curbing on the west side of buildings E and D. So if you come across the sidewalk and that curb that runs down, that, that pipe is about seven feet below where that curb is and it, it runs from Voorhees straight down to School Avenue. And there were a lot of comments relative to the rain garden over that, but th those all are eliminated with the elimination of the rain okay. garden. But the, the discussion, just so we get it on the record, is that the curbing, uh, the, 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 there are utilities in the vicinity or below the curbing uh, that's in that area. Is that correct? That is correct. And that in the event that the municipality has to access any of the, those utilities and any of the curbing has to be disturbed, uh, it was agreed in discussions with the township engineer yesterday, or the assistant township engineer, that there would be a developer's agreement and that the municipality would not be responsible for replacing any of the curbing that would be on the... Uh, owner of the property, is that correct? That is correct. And a solid developer's agreement will right. be executed. Yeah, and actually just to clarify that a little bit more, to the degree there's any improvements of RPMs over that easement, any disturbance uh, would be, it would be RPM's responsibility right. to replace. That's correct. Uh, and again, just so, so for the board's advocation, just show the, on the exhibit where the rain garden was. Referring to exhibit A2, right. this is building A to the southwest, southeast is building uh, C, we have road D, road E, and then road A, it's, it's circled within that area of those, the road D, road E, School Avenue, and, and road A. Okay, and basically as a result of the discussion yesterday, so the record is clear that, that Raiden Garden is going to be eliminated and approximately 65 to 70 percent of that site will be green space. Some of the area of the rain garden will remain as plantings and have other amenities that we will work out with the township planner. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Hey, um, we have gone through two witnesses. I, at this point, I would like to ask the board if they have any questions of these witnesses? I wanted to ask a question before, but he was able to put it in perspective about the illumination uh, using the SCD, which is very nice. So I don't have any comments. Okay. Um, I think I just do have a, a question on uh, parking on the interior roads. Uh, it looks to me as though there's no parking proposed on Road A. Uh, but uh, if I'm, and I'm using this plan, but, but I've looked at the larger plans and, and they're shown there too. I guess I'm more concerned about roads 
D and E, which I think are going to be one way if I'm reading the, the arrows. That is correct. Okay. Uh, and uh, also roads B and C, I guess, are going to be one way as well. Uh, no, th those are two-way. Those are two-way, okay. The, uh, something's hiding one of the arrows. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. A lot of very, information there. Okay, very good. So uh, with this parking, uh, these interior roads would still be sufficient for the fire engines? Yes, they are. They are. Okay. I just wanted to check on that. Cause we, we did evaluate that. Okay, because... Uh, years ago, there was one road which is only 24 feet wide, and it's kind of a problem because you can only park on one side of it. Uh, the f fire prevention has reviewed the plans. So. Uh, hey, he uh, does. He does ask that some turning radii um, need to be further evaluated. Um, some areas need to be adjusted to allow adequate turn radius for the ladder truck. Um, I, I don't remember it being a significant issue of concern uh, for Mr. House, but nonetheless, he is asking for more clarification, and I think some more turning radii diagrams on the on the plans. That's and and, and we agree to, to work that out. Yeah, we will agree to meet with him and resolve those issues. Okay. I guess my only other thing would be a comment as a as a member of the uh, redevelopment agency. Uh, the agency had been asking the developer for some sort of a overall concept that we could see and this does speak to that so, yeah well uh, yeah it, it goes a long ways towards uh, uh, creating something that the uh, redevelopment agency would like to see happen so uh, just a few issues of uh, clarification um, I don't know if it was stated in the testimony but the the internal roads um, they're calling them roads, but uh, very early on in the process, uh, those are actually going to be private roads. I mean, it really, within the interior of the site, it really is an apartment complex. Um, the applicant has designed them in a way to have, uh, um, you know, kind of an urban feel, uh, and but and to you know, they, I think they'll they'll appear to people as as if they're streets, but they're going to be owned and maintained by by uh, the applicant uh, and there are certain elements in the design frankly that aid in the that aid in the design that aid in the aesthetics of the design that frankly the township doesn't want to be responsible for right. um, and that and that certainly um, improve the appearance of the overall design but the applicant will be responsible for maintaining those similarly the park uh, is going to be open to the public but that is also going to be owned and maintained by the applicant and we won't have to pile this now not no nope, they will be responsible for maintaining everything within the within the site just right. just as any other apartment complex would thank you are there any other questions uh dr chase now did i understand you're eliminating that central rain garden entirely that is correct i mean i agreed with mr healy that it was too big but on the well, i like rain gardens so they're the the coming thing, particularly for the purification of of runoff before it goes into the storm drains, and I w I would agree with you 100 percent. I would like to note that we still have a rain garden at the southeast corner at that basin oh. there, and that's the one that we were using for infiltration groundwater recharge. the The rain garden function of in the park area actually had undergrain, so it wasn't really functioning as a, a true rain garden. Yeah. So we still have yeah. that feature, and actually we keep it away from the public use where it will probably be able to grow and manifest as it should as opposed oh. to being tread upon by the public. I was just uh, thinking that it would be <coughs> nice to have small rain gardens in the parking areas of <coughs> buildings A and Yeah, of A and C, uh, sort of at the low point of those to 
again to purify the water somewhat before it went into the under drains? Or do the drains all wind up in the, the rain garden to the east of building B? B buildings uh, A and C uh, both actually go to a basin, but they, they have a man uh, manufactured treatment device for both of those. The uh, building B actually goes to the rain garden and infiltration yeah. there. So they, they are all treated. Now with the overall concept, when you know, my understanding, I wasn't involved from the early stages at the onset, but my guess is that they were sacrificing some of those parking areas, green space in the parking areas, in order to create that one larger, almost half acre park uh, within the development. Mm -hmm. Um, if there are no other questions, oh, yes. What is going to be the final width of the of Voorhees, Berry, and school once you remove the parking and shift the curb? Uh, I believe we have a 24-foot cartway. Uh, I think Voorhees is 24 and a half. Uh, I believe we're going to have full 24 foot for School Avenue, um, and I believe Barry's 24. But I, if I am correct, it actually has uh, an additional seven foot shoulder on the other side, so it will be in excess of the 24, I believe. Um, if there are no further questions from the board, I believe we need a public hearing. We do. Uh, so I would. Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry, the applicant had. Um, as the engineer had, had indicated, had the curb lines kind of going in and out to go around curbs. Staff basically said, no, that's not going to be a maintenance nightmare because the roads around the site are the township's roads. And the applicant agreed to um, el eliminate that proposed situation. So um, as you indicated, <laughs> school road is just going to be a straight curb. So the proposed on-street parking spaces um, won't, won't be there. You'll have the, the Berry Street will have a consistent line of, of uh, curb line with parking spaces along Berry. Voorhees, I, I, I forget what you, will that have a sh width that, that will will have parking? It has yes. the nine spots remain. There were no utility poles there, so it okay. wasn't. Okay, so that's, so that's remaining as proposed. As, as proposed. proposed. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, last. Um, yeah, the, well, the bump outs will be eliminated. That That's mine, right? All the bump outs will be eliminated. All, all the bump outs are going to be eliminated. Yes. That is okay. correct. Either poles are going to be relocated on Barry and on School Avenue. We're extending the curb so that it's a straight curb, uh, and all the poles will be behind the curb. Okay, thank you. And one last question, uh, sidewalk connections. Uh, first of all, in terms of sidewalks, as the plan shows, you have sidewalks proposed. Um, everywhere throughout the development. And so connecting all of the different components, all the different buildings. Um, the one thing, though, that, that the, the township is trying to encourage as much as possible is sidewalk connections outside. Um, so I made the suggestion that there be a, a drop curbs and crosswalk across Berry Street to connect to the sidewalk in front of Berry Street Commons. Um, and then also the township recently constructed a sidewalk on the um, easterly side of Berry between Blair and Voorhees. Uh, do you agree to make those sidewalk connections with drop with handicapped curbs and crosswalks? Yes, we do. All right, thank you. So when you say the, the streets will be 24 feet wide, that's you know not counting the parking. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would now accept a motion to open the meeting to the public. Seconded. So, so moved. And moved and seconded. seconded. Yeah. But you moved it first. Uh, okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 
meeting is now open to the public on this application. Anyone wishing to speak is welcome to do so and invited. So, yeah. Form a line. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, seeing, no, seeing no one coming forward, I would accept a, a motion to close the public portion. So moved. Is there a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, now, uh, does anyone on the board wish to hear from other uh, experts that uh, are here but have not yet spoken. Are are we are we comfortable with the uh, with what has been presented? Seeing no one saying I'm not comfortable with what's been presented, I will assume that that is the case. Uh, have, have you uh, has the applicant acquired all of these properties? I saw a lot of. Names of property owners on the application as we have it. So we we can swear in the representative from RPM. Good evening, everyone. Good to be here. Testimony you're going to provide is the truthful truth. Nothing. I do. Brendan McBride, MC Capital B R I D E, from RPM Development, 77 Park Street, Montclair, New Jersey. Mr. McBride, can you update the board as to the status of the land acquisitions uh, the compromise or consist of this development? Of course. Uh, so this is made up of an two different assemblages of lots, two different parcels. Um, the first is uh, primarily located on School Ave, 19 to 21 School Ave. Used to be a bus depot. Apparently before that it was a food manufacturing facility. Um, we currently are the owners of that property. And um, the other property is the entirety of what some of you know is the, the Bust uh, site, uh, an HVAC contractor. Um, the redevelopment agency acquired that site by eminent domain um, in uh, 2016, I think, officially, and, uh, or early 2017, I should say. And um, it'll be conveyed in the next week um, to RPM's uh, project entity. So in the near future, RPM will own the entirety of the site uh, proposed today. Thank you. Uh, does that satisfy the question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question for you, please. Uh, you said uh, the site was used, being used before as an industrial base, right? Okay. Do, do you have any study that indicate there is no uh, hazardous uh, material left over on that side? Uh, the, uh, the, the prior owner of, um, of the sites uh, had done some remediation work, and we have phase one environmental assessments for both sites. Um, there's very, very limited remaining issues, uh, mostly focusing on oil stains and the like from vehicles. Um, there was fairly extensive remediation that was done on the Buse site, and the, uh, the, the owner at that time of that site had all of that, uh, all those issues remediated, and it passed muster with the DEP. Um, so it's, uh, it's fully signed off at this point. Uh, the question is said remediation. Um, do you see probably the reports that said that it's when they did their an, uh, assessment of um, remedial uh, mit uh, mitigation solution that they do with respect to um, what they find on site. Do you see the final reports on that or you just assume based on uh, what they told you? We, uh, we didn't um, assume. We, we got pretty deep actually into understanding the reports. Okay. Um, we had our consultant review all of their reports and there were actually some aspects of their final determination which was made by a, an LSRP, a licensed site remediation professional, okay. on behalf of the DEP. Some of the judgments they made, we felt, left a little bit of a gray area okay. in understanding what was going on with some of the groundwater because of the depth of the testing that they had done. So just to be extra confident of the positive, the, the lack of, uh, 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 I guess, negative Assessment. results, right. um, 
or any further need for remediation, we had our environmental consultant go back and actually do further groundwater testing just to have assurances that everything was fine. As part of the uncertainty analysis. Okay, I got it. Correct. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions of Mr. McBride? Okay. Uh, would you would you like to sum up? Just very yeah. Well. Oh, right up. We we public public. Oh, One more time. Just okay. Okay. Am I allowed to make a motion? Uh, in that case, I would move that we reopen the public hearing on this application. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, seeing no one coming forward, I move we close the public session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, that, it's very good we have the attorney here to dot the <laughs> I's and cross the T's so that, so that what we do here tonight is, is unquestionably legal. Mr. Mettler, if I may. Uh, this project, as you are aware, since you are on the redevelopment agency, took a long time to get here. There was a lot of work involved by a lot of people, both at the redevelopment agency and also the township professionals. We had numerous meetings with them and had an extensive amount of input. Uh, we were able to produce, I believe, a plan that uh, will be an asset to that neighborhood. It is fully in compliance except for the minor deviations for the sign. Uh, and all of the representations that we made that as to the changes we will obviously do. Uh, and those changes that we are making as a result of the meeting yesterday will make the plan even better. So I would respectfully request that the site plan approval be granted with the variance for the sign. Oh, I'm sorry. You remind me, um, in the paperwork we had, there's an Annex B appeal to the planning board of the Township of Franklin from the provisions of the development ordinance in which you did apply for a couple of very technical variances, one really more from the uh, development standards. Yeah, Mr. Chase, we reviewed those with Mr. Healy, and those are actually design waivers and not variances, so yeah. that's why I did not uh, bring them up this evening as variances. They're really design waivers that have been reviewed by staff. Yeah, yeah, one I, of them clearly was a design waiver. Hmm. I wasn't so sure about the other one. Yeah, I, and I can I can concur uh, with with Mr. Lamperts' uh, uh, indication. It's that, that that those are not variances. The only variance is the sign variance. The design um, uh, waivers that they identified. I think a few of them actually aren't applicable um, to the degree that there are a number of design standards that are, apply to this development. I think the architect's testimony and the engineer's testimony satisfy. Uh, I think they've adequately demonstrated that they comply. And Pete, you are going to comply with all comments <coughs> in the staff review letters? Other than, for example, when, Ms. when, when uh, Julio agreed, we do not have to do a traffic study. Things that we represented on the record that staff agreed we did not have to do. In no all other else. respects, we will comply, yeah. Okay, that being the case, do we have a motion to approve the application and the requested variance? Well, I'll move it. I'll second it. Yes. Carl House? Yes. Robert Mettler? Yes. Jennifer Ragno? Yes. Godwin Amolo? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Do we have any committee reports? No. I do not see any. Um, Uh, Mr. Healy, under work session, new business, is there anything to come up tonight? No. Okay. How about an executive session? Is one required? Nope. No. 
That being the case, is there a motion to adjourn? No moved. Is there a second? I second. Second it. Excellent. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye.